Hello and welcome. So in today's video, we are going to uh, talk about interview questions about networking. Uh, it's a three part series, just like Linux questions. Uh, it's going to be basic, intermediate and advanced. So let's get started. <clears throat> First question, what is a network? What are the types of networks? So this is basically just ice breaking. Uh, they want to know if you are aware of different network types. So you can say a network is a collection of interconnected devices to share resources. Types include local, LAN, wide area, metropolitan area, personal area. Person area network, <clears throat> you don't have to talk about in a uh, professional interview because that's uh, more like a home network. But you should talk about CAN, CAN uh, campus area network. I will replace personal area with campus area network. <clears throat> Second question, can you explain the OSI model and its layers? This one is guaranteed. Somebody somewhere will ask you. Some will go in more detail. Some will just ask you uh, just a generic question like this. Some will ask you to name the seven layers. The OSI open system interconnection model is a connected conceptual model used to understand and describe how different network protocols interact and work together to provide network services. The seven layers are physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. <clears throat> there is a um, mnemonic that you can uh, memorize to that will help you um, remember all these layers so it was uh, please don't throw away uh, sausage pizza or something like that and there's all all people should try new dr pepper that's how i remember so a is for all, a, all people p should try new dr pepper so application level is the seventh layer and the physical is first layer so that's how i remember <clears throat> Third question, how is the TCP IP model different from the OSI model? So if you compare them side by side, OSI model has seven layers. TCP IP is four layers. TCP IP is an older one made uh, by military DARPA net. <clears throat> so TCP IP is a more compact model with four layers, network, interface, internet, transport, and application compared to OSI. Seven. It's more practical and widely used in the real world implementation of networks. Do get the uh, side by side analysis um, uh, for you so you can perform better in the interview. <clears throat> Question four Can you define what an IP address is? What are the difference between IPv4 and IPv6? So, IP address is a unique identifier for a device on a network. IPv4 used 32 bits. Uh, IPv6 was 12 and so uh, to solve a problem that we are running out of IP addresses. Now IPv6 is a 128 bits very, uh, the number is gigantic. It means that all you can al uh, allocate an IP address to all the grains of sands or, <clears throat> and you will still have IP addresses available. So uh, that's why you, we don't have any IPv6 public addresses. All of them are, sorry, we don't have any IPv6 private addresses. Just like we, for a home, home network, each uh, IPv6 address is unique. And it's uniquely routable on the internet. Well, question number five, what is a subnet mask? How is it used in network segmentation? The subnet mask is used in IP networking to divide an IP address into networks and host ports, aiding in network segmentation and routing. So again, go ahead, learn what how to subnet is. So basically what you, uh, for each segment, you uh, have one broadcast and the other address, uh, some are reserved. So basically with each segment, you have some that go unused. Uh, subnetting allows you to allocate more than your uh, default 250, uh, 255 addresses. So what you can do is, for example, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, on one network, especially in networking, when you're going switches and routing, you just need 
one or two addresses and if you allow the mini uh, if you allocate the minimum 256 basically your uh, 254 address of the, those addresses are just sitting there being not used uh, subnetting allows you to uh, customize your networks so in one network you need maybe 300 or 500 networks uh, addresses you get those IP addresses in that and in net one network maybe you just need 10 so you subnet it in a way that it gets <clears throat> close to that number so you won't get 10 but you will get next best for example it's two four eight six oh sorry eight and then next is 16 for 10 if you need just 10 you will get 16 uh, subnet so the number of not used IP is much less than if you had allocated a 256 block question number six can you explain what DNS is and why it is important so DNS is uh, just like a telephone directory where it's uh, uh, it's it's a lot harder to remember all those IP addresses, but what it does is basically it corresponds what is the IP address against what is the human readable um, domain name. So don't confuse it. It just for internet. It does have. It is the same for your local domain. If you ever done the Windows Server administration, you have local host. Your computer name is the perfect example. If you go, your computer has a name, so you can ping through your computer name or you can ping through your IP address. What is DHCP and what is it? What's its role in a network? DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It's used to dynamically assign IP addresses. Back in the old day, you were supposed to <clears throat> make a copy, make a list, uh, give all the connected devices on your network uh, IP addresses. Remember which address you have already assigned, which is still available. And then, you know, on a home network you uh, or a small office, you have some IP addresses that are just for the uh, printer. Some are just for the special uh, special uh, purpose. For example, these are the IP addresses that are easier to remember. They should be allocated to this group of computers that are more uh, like high bandwidth <coughs> or something like that so dhcp automatically allocates and extended their lease or if the network is uh, if the device is no longer connecting it will reuse that ip with the static method you have to go and again manually bring that ip address back into your available uh, pool of ip addresses what is the role of router in a network? A router is a networking device that forwards data packets between networks. So basically, your home router is not routing traffic between your uh, computer. For example, you're uh, from one computer to another computer that is in your same home. You're sharing files. Router is not doing anything. That's your Ethernet uh, uh, switch that is built into your home network home router so router is between networks so between networks is your home network and you going to connect any website that is between networks so router <clears throat> if you're going to your local device ethernet switch will take the request forward it but if you're going to internet or you're going to your neighbors for example gaming people like, like to do that that is when router will come because you're going uh, from one network to another it uses IP address to determine where to forward the packet. So within your home network, IP address does not play any role. You are still going through uh, the MAC addresses. IP address comes when you are going to a international uh, address, be it your next door neighbor, that you are going through internet, or somewhere in a different continent. What is firewall and why it is used? A firewall is a security system that controls and monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an organization's security policies. The most ex virtually everybody will have access to a firewall that is your Windows firewall. You can go play with it. Uh, the hardware device, like uh, in one of my videos, I have shown PFSense that I install physically on uh, on my network uh, parameter. So as soon as uh, the traffic hits from my modem. It hits the firewall. <clears throat> Can you explain what a VPN is and why it's used? So virtual private network, basically it routes your traffic 
normal traffic that you would you sense over the internet it it creates a tunnel and all of the traffic is encrypted and if, if nobody can see what's inside that they cannot see the packets it's all encrypted so we use it to connect to our work but you can set up your own virtual private networks from one location to another very easy again pf sense but it, ex it expands a private network access. So for example, when you connect to your <clears throat> um, work computer, you have a network address that is uh, there internal. But at, at your home, when you try to connect to the same network, you get your private uh, or uh, your uh, IP, ISP address. But if you were to connect through VPN, then your IP address is changes. It no longer is the IP address that your router gives you. It is the one of the IP address of your um, works internal network, but then the traffic is rerouted through your um, work as well. For example, if you are at home and I go to google.com, my ISP router modem takes the request, goes direct to uh, Google, bring me the page directly. But if I were to connect to my VPN, through VPN to my work, now I send my request to my, uh, again, I try to go to Google, the request will go to my uh, works, DICP, DNS server, whatever, that will fetch the Google and will send me. So it, there is a lag involved, it's, and there, it, it's not noticeable, but still, that's how the VPN works. <clears throat> All right, that's question, uh, Alton questions. Uh, like I said, this is just, an, uh, give you a taste of what question can be asked. Uh, there will be some intermediate and then advanced uh, questions uh, in coming days. I strongly suggest that you go search these answer, make your own stories, uh, practice it, how you will answer. Hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one.